Yo guys, what is up? Welcome back to some more Zero Hour, and welcome back to a uh, 1v1 match. We're on, I think, is this called Scorched Heat or Scorching Heat, something like that? And we've got uh, two really decent players here. We've got Moliere versus Lida. Now, just to confuse you, um, they've switched names. <laughs> That's what you do when, uh, when you like really bored you just decide oh yeah you know what we'll switch names so just to confuse you i think Lidor is moliere and oil air is leader i have no idea why they've done that because it just makes things very very confusing but i think like let's say you're yeah really really bored i mean like you've got no food in you can't go to the fridge you <laughs> there's nothing to eat that's what i do when i'm bored i go and eat, go and eat some cheese from the fridge and drink all the milk but yeah let's say you've got no food in the fridge you've got um yeah, you've been playing Zero Hour all day, and it's like, just let's make it a little bit more fun. Let's swap names. Yeah, yeah, that'll be fun. <laughs> so, Lidor is Moliere, and Euler is Leader. Okay, so, yeah. I don't know, man. I don't know. I really don't know. Okay, so what have we got? we got Nuke versus Tank, I believe. And up in the north, we have uh, Euler. We're just going to call them by what names they're called here. I mean, just, I'm not going to... I'm not going to sit here calling... Uh, uh, yeah, I'm not going to stand here <laughs> correcting myself for out. We're just going to call him what, what is here. Okay, so Lidor is sending an outpost to the front. He has a uh, uh, different style power reactor, so we know he is the nuke. And so far, the tank player, which is Oila, he's just making the outpost. Now, the thing for that is that tank has expensive outposts. They're 950 apiece. And Lidor has actually gone for the oil cap, which is not going to be denied, actually, on this side, at least. I would like to have... Oh, I didn't even know there's an oil in the corner. Actually, yeah, you know what? I did know there's an oil in the corner, but I would like to have seen him get that one, perhaps, as well. You can do a full oil cap. But, yeah, if he secures himself two oils, I would say that's a really good position. And he's uh, he's nuke. He's got the stronger army anyway. Because he's got, like, the faster overlords. He's got artillery units like um, Infernos and nuke cannons. Yeah, nuke cannons especially. Oil Air now going for a airfield and a prop. I don't know if that's a little bit too much too soon. Like, you won't be able to afford, like, a Lotus Overlords and whatever else you're going to produce all, all at the same time. Uh, but there is a bit of harassment being done down here. We've got an outpost in the base. Could get a dozer if he goes a little bit further right. There is a Battlemaster now out. Pretty sure this might get shut down. Go inside this little tower building thing. And it's just more of an annoyance now, isn't it? That little tower in the back of the base. You're going to need to deal with that with, a, with either a flamer or just use brute force using these tank guns. Don't want to waste like battle masters and gats into that. Definitely not. But a flamer now straight down the mid from Oil Air. Interestingly, he's called Oil Air, but he's actually behind in oils uh, and potentially very behind in oils soon. Those are just chilling down here. That is now cleared up in the back of the base. Plenty of outposts out for Euler. I think it's a... Is it a big mistake? I mean, they do have the mobility. They're just really expensive and 950 each. Is he now going to evac all of those? What? What? Wow. Well, well, well. <laughs> it's an expensive way of doing it, isn't it? I mean, you're saving the $500 barracks, but I mean, you built a barracks anyway. And he's just put four inside of there. So, yeah, this is not super pro tactic. I don't think we're seeing ever, anything revolutionary here. It's just a really expensive way of filling the helixes. But again, against the nuke, it could be good. But there's three gats out and an ECM that will definitely counter this. The helixes are expensive for tank and they build slower as well. They build five seconds slower than the other, the other Chinas. That outpost would have been good to just stay in the base to be honest, but I think he's double tapped Q or he's double tapped E to select all of his outposts. I think that's what he's done. Got an expansion over here. Uh, Lidor is now on an extra oil. Outpost is chilling in the mid. I don't know if they're empty though. Uh, yeah, they're empty. This is so weird from the purple player. Very, very weird. You've got an empty outpost army because you filled your helixes with outposts, which is the most inefficient way I can probably think of of doing it. 
Because now you have no real ground army. These are all empty apart from one tank enter in there. So, yeah, very weird. He does have three helixes, though, which are obviously very strong. You've got the mobility over, like, the gats and stuff. The gats are going to be chasing these helixes around probably most of the game. This oil has been killed. This tower almost dead. Gatlin defense being built down the bottom left. We've got a uh, Gatlin cannon on, on the top left. And one oil captured, one oil captured. Are they both even in oils now? No, pink has still got uh, a refinery advantage and a one oil advantage. Uh, this army looks scary, but yeah, we know it's empty. This is like very, very weird. Helixes flying doom really for all of these ground units unless there is gas and ecms nearby but these gas and ecms are caught out of position i definitely think when you see this amount of helixes you know that that's really expensive um so if you just spread your gas and ecms around the map that it, even one gat and ecm uh, and one ecm is difficult for these helixes to push i mean if especially if there's two and one ecm then yeah the, the tank player will really think twice about pushing into that but especially if there's this many but yeah when, when you're economically way ahead like Lidor is then uh yeah, I think spamming loads of gas like that is a good idea. And then the brute force here can definitely take this, even if these were full, but we know they're not, but even if they were full. I think one thing the player, the purple player could do at the moment is spam ECMs. So you can have a mass ECMs and then mass helixes. And when you come into fight, you would just disable all the gats and then fly into the helixes and kill everything else. I mean, these are just tanking units at the moment, aren't they? Distracting the fire. But yeah, no no GAT ECM, no air defense over here, apart from that one GAT. I think it's a little bit questionable, considering how much money he's had and for so long as well. Yeah, interesting game, that is for sure. is still flying around and getting kills I, I just think that the ping player is missing the trick just by not spreading his gats and ecms around like he had one gat there but one gat by itself is a perfect pick off for the helixes needs to be supported by one more gat you get the chain guns and then you put an ecm by it he has chain guns to be fair he does have chain guns but leaving one gat by itself with no ecm and no nothing definite mistake like uh, he has loads way too many gats here but you could easily just pull two off on an ecm put it there Pull another two off on an ECM, put it like over here. As long as you've got like three gats in here, it's going to be very, very strong, especially with the subliminal mesh in. And now we do see the mass ECMs, actually. This could be a beast of a fight, actually. Real, real beast of a fight. It's a thing of beauty, really, isn't it? <laughs> all of these ECMs. He's trying to disable all of the gats, and so far, he is doing. These gats are still moving. They're not being stopped. I have no idea why they're not being stopped. They're just trying to literally move out of the way, but... They weren't disabled. New cannon now comes in. It's a uh, shed load of units there. This overlord here has been used. I don't think it's the best of micro by both players there. I think the ECM disable could have been a little bit better, although it is difficult to do to disable every unit. You're controlling the air units as well as all, all of the ECMs individually. But now one helix has gone down. And there's no reason why them three gats in the army then couldn't have just stopped for a second and shut down the helix. You will shoot down the helix in seconds, just like you saw there because they weren't disabled at that point by the ECM, but I think he's still ahead anyway. How the, what the? Oh, he's trying to vanilla, isn't he? I thought he was tanking. <laughs> thought he was tank. Oh, baby, this carpet. Oh my God, this carpet. Yeah, I thought he was tank. I thought he was tank against Nuke, but he's actually trying to vanilla. Wondered how he had a new cannon, but that, that carpet was legendary. He's just killed like three overlords, plus whatever that was, Battlemaster or Gat or whatever. He's now amassing troops over here in the top right for some reason. This supply, I don't think has been taken unless it was captured or killed or something. Got an artillery now coming from the purple player. He's floating 10.8k. So yeah, I made a massive mistake. He's not even tank after all. He's actually China Vanilla. <laughs> I mean, it's still not the most efficient way to do it, I don't think, with the, with the outpost. Because they still cost, what do they cost? 800 for China, I think.
Okay, this artillery platform being captured by the China player, the Oli Air, or Oil Air rather. Uh, we've got the dozer moving out down the right as well. Maybe he wants to expand here, but again, the helixes could just fly over here and pick off this dozer. There are a few gats here, but again, he's not putting ECMs with him. He's making a big mistake. I mean, this is still going to be strong, don't get me wrong, but with an ECM in there, it's going to be basically impregnable. Even for like, this amount of helixes, it will still cause massive, massive damage. But yeah, I just think we've seen a little bit of an experience there from uh, Lidor. So yeah, the purple player, by the way, is the same guy that played Excal in that really decent tank mirror we saw in Snowy Drought, where it was leader against Excal. So yeah, the purple player is that same guy. Okay, so this supply is going down. Hell of a lot of gats. Hell of a lot of units all around, to be fair. Uh, hell of a lot of helixes out now as well. How many is that? Is that seven? That's seven helixes. And they're coming in from the side now and it's causing absolute devastation. A few gats here going down. Overlords going down. More gats, more gats going down. Everything here for the new player is getting absolutely wrecked. Two helixes do fall, crash and burn into the ground. ECMs here disabling absolutely everything. New cannon fires hits an outpost and an ECM pops that open. The helix is coming back in. Bring down some more terror on these units. Two gats here from, from distance causing damage to the helixes. Helixes are very low, actually. It's one goes down. One over one is very low. I think the, the tank... Sorry, the... I keep saying tank, don't I? The China player should have committed to that, though. I think you could have killed all of them gats and completely leveled everything. Yes, you would have probably would have lost one more helix, but if you'd have gone straight in at that moment, I'm pretty sure you would have been able to take all this. But the carpet coming in regardless, and this is an absolute show of destruction, isn't it, from both players. Artillery coming across the map as well for Lee Door, and I think it's not going to be long, you know, before it comes down to the last few units. Like, both players are... Eating all into their money. I suppose they've got the oils, which obviously won't run out. Was that the prop that went down? Yeah, it was. It's a problem with building your building so close together. You almost lost the airfield there as well. Helix is still raining down some death on all of these units, and these overlords are going down. Another Helix falls there, and I don't know if that was from the explosion from the overlord or not. Potentially, it was. Uh, yeah, a shed load of gats out. But again, though, he's just keeping them all in one big group. What's wrong with just, like, putting one gat there and one gat there? Do you, do you know what I mean? Why, why do they have to all be in one big blob? It just doesn't make sense to me. Because this left-hand side, if those helixes go there now, I guarantee they're going to be able to clear this. That bunker's probably going to have, what, one tank enter inside of it from experience? Uh, two tank hunters. Okay, great. What's that going to do to a, a massive bunch of helixes? And then what's that one Gat Cannon going to do against all of these? I think he's just maybe overrating the strength of that Gatling Cannon. These helixes are just going to fly around and kill everything. No subliminal meshing from the helixes. That's a definite mistake because you can double the uh, heal rate. Again, though, it's literally, I just called it. I literally just called it. If you had one more Gat there and one more Gat there, or even three... This area would be covered. Like, they're all over here. But yeah, that's great. They're all in one place. The helixes can just dodge it. This could be an EMP, though. Oh, no. No, it can't be an EMP because it's not even five star. So, nah. Got excited, though, didn't I? Or uh, your lair, though, is uh, head and XP. He's got level five. So, yeah. E this could be EMP. That could be legendary. This is the problem with just keeping the units all in one big blob. And he's not even shooting... Nah, GG, I think leader, uh, sorry, yeah, leader, which is oil air, is going to win this. This is just too bad here, I'm afraid. You keep units in one big blob, what the, what the hell do you expect? These helixes have just gone around killing so many, so many things. They've got so much XP. This is surely GG. I think leader's the favorite here as well. I've seen him do more impressive things against stronger players. Whereas, um... Um, yeah, Moliere, which is the, the pink player. Um, yeah, I, I just think he's a weaker player. And it's kind of just confirming it for me, like keeping bl big blobs of units like that, not defending your left. Like even now, sending a dozer out. Like what, what do you think is going to happen to that? <laughs> I suppose one thing going for him is that purple has left the oils. Here comes artillery. Uh, please tell me that oil's going to get killed. And there's a refinery captured there as well. He is killing the oils now. 
Artillery comes in but completely misses the target, gets a little bit of damage done to this uh, overlord. Really far away supply here. These helices could fly into the gats. The gats are moving forward. Purple floating 7.1k. Lidor spending pretty much all of his money. Helix is now flying into the main base. Again, no keeping all units in one big blob. The helices could just go in and kill everything, really, couldn't they? The only thing that will cause a bit of damage is that Gatling cannon. But again, as we saw before in the numbers, especially with the vet free helix, could just go in and kill absolutely everything. That tower is pretty full, though. Could be useful. Uh, another good fight there by the purple China player. Uh, I'm re yeah. I, I was just about to say I'm really struggling to see any any way Lidor could win. You I mean, there was just too many mistakes there from Lidor. Just too many mistakes. And I think it just shows the difference in class there. Pretty much every every engagement, uh, the purple China player was coming out on top. I don't even think he played that good to be honest. Like filling filling the uh, helixes with the with the outposts. I mean, yeah, okay, you had loads of outposts switching into helixes. It's a really quick way of doing it, but it is an inefficient way of doing it. He had a really empty army. I, I really like the ECM and helixes. That's like a, a pro strat you often see among the top level games. But yeah, the, after that eco boom from the nuke player, uh, look, look how much money extra he collected, man. Like, you should have won that. You do the eco boom, you've got the stronger army. You, you literally, I, I don't want to sound like a broken record, but I'm going to say it again. It's just spread the, just spread the gats and ECMs around. The helixes can't flank you then. And then you just concentrate your force down the middle. Yeah, okay, you went mass ECMs, but there was plenty of times like, like in that big first engagement, the helix were flying over the ar army. And most of the army was disabled. There was at least like three or four gats there that weren't disabled. And they could have just shot directly up. What a lot of people don't know is when, when gats are moving, they do less damage. They do a lot less damage. If they're parked stationary and shooting, they do a hell of a lot more damage. But he was just consistently moving himself. And yeah, I think you should know that. Like the I've seen um I've seen Moliere, which is the the pink player playing a lot and i think that's a common thing you need to be knowing now there's enough streams and tutorials and people talking about strats and, and stuff like that and probably played the game enough to know that yeah they do more damage when they're um uh when they're stationary so yeah i think he had an opportunity to kill like what probably three helixes maybe four helixes at that point yes the ecms were there and disabling stuff but it was also them three or four gas that weren't disabled for a few seconds and you could have used that time to kill the helixes and then you're just against ecms and then you bring in your overlords and that new cannon and whatever and got that amazing hit so yeah that was a wasted game i believe by the pink player but nonetheless it was still really really epic lots of destruction lots of overlords dead lots of gats dead emps all kind of crazy stuff i just feel like from kind of like a third into the game it was kind of a little bit one-sided but uh, yeah, I don't know. Let me know what you think players should have done differently here in the in the comments. I will read, or I'll pretty much read all the comments nowadays. So uh, yeah, let me know what you thought. Both players could have done differently here. Is only pro strat they could have done. Should um, the China player, even though he won, should he have done anything different? And against like a pro level player, would he have got the win there? Because I really doubt it. So uh, yeah, do you know any China pro strats against uh, Nuke, for example? So yeah, GG well played and see you in the next one.